everybody, welcome back to the Dice Tower. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Joy Evans. And I'm Camilla. And today we're taking a look at gin here. Gin like the genie, not like uh, the drink. Uh, and this is a Euro style game in which we are going to be traveling around town. Mm -hmm. We are going to be gathering mages. We're sort of mages ourselves. Right. And capturing the, these gins, putting them in bottles, corking those up. And turning them into the authorities, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, that checks out. I'm trading them in them. for victory no. points. No, if you get okay. the points back, yeah, you get something back. There's, there's definitely an exchange happening. Mm -hmm. I think we turn them in. Fine, we're collecting them. We're collecting okay. gins, well, trying to get the most victory in points. Bottles. Let me go ahead and show you how the game works. I'll give you a quick look on the board, and we'll be right back. Here we're jumping into a game for two players that's already in progress. I know it looks like a whole lot going on. I'm going to give you the basics here so that you have a general understanding of what is happening. Let's start with scoring. So at the end of the game, you are going to be scoring for a few different things. As we take a look here at the rule book, it lets you know you're going to be getting points for trophies. That's these over here, and you earn them from turning in sets of gins you've captured and stuck into a bottle. We have one right here. This is a white little fella. We stuck him in a matching bottle, we put a cork on it. You turn in sets of those and you get these abilities, and, you know, special rewards and victory points uh, worth 30 normally, sometimes 36 over here. Okay, so you get points from that. You're gonna get points from gins you still have in the bottle, 10 points if you cork them and they, you still have them. You get points for them being trapped over here in these circles. You're going to get points from leftover bottles and corks that you never used. And uh, for completing these scoring cards up here. So that's what you're doing. Grabbing these gins, and they are at these round locations. Uh, capturing them, putting them over here. Uh, possibly putting them into the bottles and corking those bottles and then maybe trading them in for these big rewards, all right? Every player has a board. On that board you're tracking a few different things. You're going to be tracking the main one being uh, this right here. This slider is your power basically for capturing these gins at the different locations. Every place has one big one, this silvery one and then a number of smaller ones based on the number of players when we begin the game, all right? Now every player also has a mage, this mage right here, and the way they're facing is important. You'll see they move on these lines and they need to be facing a specific location. This one's facing that way, this one over here is facing this way. They're always facing the thing right in front of them. So on your turn, you are going to move your character, move your mage, and then take an action at that location. Those actions are these symbols, and they are all around the board. So that's what we're going to be going on, uh, going over so that you have an idea of what's going on, okay? Uh, the locations come in two types, the squares, and those are going to give you sort of a weaker ability, a basic ability. And then the circles give you a special ability. Some It's the same idea, but souped up so that it's a little bit stronger, okay? So let's go over them. Now let's start up here at the top, the Academy of Magical Arts. If you go to that, and it's a basic ability, then you are going to get one scroll and three uh, up here on this track, assuming you can take it. This is your maximum. Uh, if you do the souped up one, then you are going to move this up and then the same thing, one scroll and three of these gems. Um, if you go to the archives over there, you are going to take either one of these abilities or two different ones if it's a special action, all right? And these are going to let you take coins, scrolls, uh, replenish one of your helpers right here, one of these uh, wizards that's helping you out. Uh, this one right here lets you flip this over and be able to keep more gins before you bottle them, okay? And then the top one there lets you take one of these tokens, assign it to one of these square abilities, and now when you go there, you get this and you get this. So it works for you. It gives you an extra special goodie that you get when you go there. Uh, this location right here, the Dragon Goblet Tavern, is where you hire these people. 
So if you go there, you can take one of these two. If you go with a normal basic, if you go with a special, then you can also take them and they give you a, a better abilities and they also come with a key. You can get these keys right here. They'll be useful for various things. These people are going to help you catch gins. We'll come back to that later on. Coming down here to the secret catacombs, if you go there, you can basically just flip over one of these and take what it says, or flip over two and take what they say. Coins, scrolls, bottles to keep gins in, uh, that sort of thing is what you're going to get there. We go over here to the manufacturer of magical items. If you go there, then you are going to get corks. These are the corks for the bottles. And then also you can take these parts of the full image, which is like a staff, a hat, and a cloak. They have abilities, and once you make the entire image, like this person only has a hat right now, once you make the entire stack, the entire image, you are going to be able to move this right here, up one, you gain two on the track, but more importantly, this can never be below this. So once you level this up, and then again, when you deploy all four of your special little extra abilities, it moves up again. Uh, you will never drop below that total, and this is what helps you again catch Jin. So we'll come back to that, but that's what that does. Uh, gathering these pieces lets you, you know, gain special abilities and move this up so you're never at zero again. Uh, and then we've got this one up here, the market. You go to the upper market there, you can move your little character and pay for some special ability. If you do the, the special action, you get to do whatever it says twice, okay? So pay coins, get corks or scrolls, uh, buy bottles, what have you, all right? So that's the general flow there. There's also one special location, the center right here, where if you go there, you can max out your gems there, or you can capture some of the super gins, for if you pay a bunch of these gems, and then you can do the thing at the bottom as well. The cost down here, buying a bottle, gaining a cork, refreshing your helpers, the cost of that is based on where this is on your board. It points at the cost. As it moves up, that thing gets cheaper. So right now, for example, for me to go to the center and buy a bottle or buy a cork, if this is right here, then it's costing me three. If I never moved it at all, it's costing me five. So that's what that uh, does. It, it both makes the center cheaper and, and pushes up your maximum that you can track, all right? That you can store, basically. So those are all of the locations. Let me talk a little bit about movement. So the way movement works is, on my turn, say it's red, and they're facing this space, they are going to move, and they can move through that space uh, following any road that leads out of there. So, for example, they can move through this one. They already took this action last turn, and they go and face this location. And then they take that location, uh, take that action, deal with gins because there's gins there. Next time they move through this one, they could go and come out this way, let's say, and go boop, face that one, stand right there. Or they could go and face this one and take that action. So the point being where you move and the way in which you move is very important. If you ever arrive somewhere where someone already is, let's say they move there and this person's already there, they can pay them to take that action. Uh, you pay them a coin or a scroll and, or you move. You move along, you skip it and go to the next one you want facing, again, the location into which you're taking an action. If there are gins there, meaning it's one of the round locations, then either you capture a gin or they hurt you a little bit and they take away one of your green um, power here, okay? So how do you capture them? Well, let's find that out. Let's go ahead and max this out for this player. And let's say that they just showed up right there. They take their actions at the Academy of Magical Arts, get some goodies, uh, move this up, gain a scroll, and gain three here, up to a maximum. And then they're going to capture gins, okay? So the gins. You have a little player aid right here. It lets you know that any of the normal ones, they cost you four. If you want to capture one of them, it takes four of these, four of the, the green power. If you want to capture the big guy, he is four plus two for everybody else who's there. So if I want to capture, and I'll lay these guys down here so you can see them. If I want to capture this little fella or this little fella, they're four. Each is four. 
If I want to capture him, that's four plus two plus two. If I can get that much, then I can grab him and put him over here or right in the bottle if I have it and a cork. He can go into any colored bottle, the silver guy. And then if I get the big guy, I actually get a little bonus of capturing another one, assuming I can house them, you know. Um, if I capture one of the small ones, I, I just take him. This one already was over here, so I could do that, all right? And I pay one, two, three, four for doing that. These people that you hire at the tavern, they help you do that by giving you more of that strength. So for example, this person right here says that I can pay a coin and they are going to get me two of that green power, but they also get me plus one for every one of the white gins there and plus one for every one of the little fire gins there. So you, you might get a total that's pretty decent. You know, if I go here, then I'm going to use this person there. I would get the two plus the one for the fire gin. This is a total of three, and then I might just need to spend one more there. That's a total of four. Bam, I can capture somebody. I could take this one, assuming I have the space, I can put them in there, right? Don't forget, they can also just go right in a bottle, but the bottle has to match. So if I have this bottle and I have a cork, then I can capture them and just stick them right in the bottle, cork the bottle, and they can never come back out again. Uh, once you put a cork in the bottle, you cannot remove that gin again or move things around. And if you have three of a matching type of gin in bottles, you can cash them in and gain one of these. The victory point conversion is basically the same. This at the end of the game would be 10 points if you still have it just like this. Three of them turned in gets you something from here which gives you a bonus right now, and then you flip this over and it's 30 points. So those, you know, same thing, 30 points, but you get a little bonus on top of it. Sometimes these tiles over here don't have a special ability. They're just 36 points, which means the special ability is just getting six points, all right? So there you go. Those are the moving parts. That is what you are doing. As soon as the location is emptied of the gins, and by the way, if you leave the silver guy alone, he's the last one there, he just runs away. He's a punk. Once it's empty, we're gonna put out a couple of new guys out there, but not the big silver guys anymore. Just a couple of the smaller ones. And once all the silver ones are gone, that sort of triggers the end of the game, and you do some final scoring and see who comes out on top, as I explained with all of the scoring uh, parts. There you go, that is what's going on in the game, and that is how you try to achieve success in Jin. All right, so this designer has a couple of previous designs that I'm aware of, and um, one of those is Hadara. Okay. Hadara oh. is a really neat card drafting game, okay? The other one is a little more Euro-y than that, a little closer to this, and that's a game called Town, uh, or Crown, I'm sorry, Crown, of Imara, okay. and I don't know if you guys okay. have played that have game. Not, no. It's a little bit like this one. Um, this is maybe a little more complicated than that, more moving parts, but I'll tell you one, maybe you guys can agree or disagree with me here. This is a game that seems like a lot the first time you are yes. shown. Yes. That's the biggest thing for me, the teach makes it seem like it's like, Oof. Oof. Yeah, you're like, right. oh boy, there's a lot of moving parts, and then you start to play and the turns are kind of quick mm -hmm. and snappy and right. parts generally fall into place. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, it has that feeling of, oh, if I do this, it unlocks that, which unlocks that. So it has a little bit of that that feeling of a, of a good roll and write. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's big. It's mm -hmm. too big to be considered anything similar to that. But it has that idea of if I get the full outfit, I then level this up, and when I level this right. up, I get two gem strength. And when I do this, I then can go over here and get one of these better bonuses. And I like that. I like that. Combos? There's all, yeah, there's all these things, mm -hmm. but a turn is pretty clean it is. in this game. I mean, so clean, because you'll just move up, and then you'll just activate. It's really nice. Yeah, I really? like the differences in the, you know, I guess the minor and major cities, I don't know what it calls them though. Right, right. Which is similar enough, but in, but different enough to make you kind of seek out that larger city. Yeah, and there's everything's around the board. I like yeah. that too. It's not like, yes. oh, we need a player raid. No, the board 
right. is, is the, the player. player in. Yes. Yep. Pretty good. I, I will say this is, for as much iconography that is in it, it's mm -hmm. very clean. It I've never stumbled over that. I never had a problem with it. Where can I go for that again? It's right there on the board. It's all connected, and it's a very simple symbology. For it it. And right. I really like that. I think it makes the game much more approachable than what it seems, like you said, in that teach. Yeah. You know, the teach is very like, okay, I'm just gonna start pulling levers, and by your second turn, you're like, no questions, I got it. Got ba, it. Ba, 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 ba. Wait, where do I go to get quirks? And that's the end of the question. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's very easy to jump into after that first or second turn. Yes, I think so. Now, the game, I would say, does feel a little long, and the trigger's not even that exuberant. It's like, oh, you know, once all the silver guys, the boss genies go away, mm -hmm. that triggers the end of the game, one more turn, boom. But it does feel, maybe because that sounds so simple, oh, once all these silver genies are gone, you're like, oh, this is going to be quick. But no, you sort of take a while. And I think, again, yeah. this is generally a side effect of having quick, simple turns mm -hmm. is that you end up taking many, many, many of them and so the game feels a little long. Yes. I agree. I think the objectives are, are small, so it makes you think it's going to go quicker, but then the re resources are so tight. Right. And, and, I mean, you'll have a plethora of one and not enough of the other to do what you want. And it makes that frustration, which I think is good in a game, because yes. you've got to find that balance. Right. And it does have a little bit of repetitive feel where your goal is to go around, get a bottle, get a cork, get a genie. Yeah. Right. You know, and once you do those three things, that's done. And then, again, you have to... Get a cork, get a bottle, get a genie. You know, in, in whatever order you sure. want to do those three yes. things. But that's so. So while you are getting uh, some of the clothing, the staff, the clothing, and the the hat, the hat, yeah, that yeah. those three things, or as you hire other mages, get them on your team, you have a little bit of feeling like you're more powerful as the game mm -hmm. goes, but not enough to to take to make it not feel repetitive because right. the thing you're doing is still the same old, the same old, the same old almost every turn. What did you guys think of the... Because the game ultimately is very Euro. It's like turning right. stuff into other stuff. What did you think of the theme? Did you, did, did you find the we're pointy hat mages and are like, ha-ha, oh, grabbing a gin and showing him a bottle. Did that come through for you guys? Did that help at all? Whether or not it came through or not, I enjoyed it a lot more than I probably should. The idea of grabbing those genies, pulling them forward and having them there, and then putting them in the bottle and corking it, then I found it very rewarding, you know? I thought it was, I thought the artwork was great. It was very cute. I liked the artwork of the mages standing there. I liked that. Well, the theme came out, I mean, it's still a Euro game, so as much as I think a Euro game can, yeah. I think it did was it help? You know, like, it, it... it did help, and that's what propelled it forward to me. Is the idea. I think maybe the mechanisms of the game didn't necessarily help it, but the production did. Right. And maybe yeah. that's what you're saying, where there is yep. a, a bottle and you get a bottle of a different color and then you put that little meeple gin in it and then yeah. you put the cork on. Like it, it, the production of it helps sell the theme more than the mechanisms. But because sure. you're actually touching the physical components, representing it, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it definitely could have been blue cube, white cube. Sure. You know, a silver cube, but it's not, and so I think that's where the theme comes through is through the production, um, more so than the mechanism. I agree with that. I think those meeples with the screen printing and they're like they are nice pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing has nice artwork. Now I will say I think this cover looks very sinister. Yeah, compared right. to the feeling in the game, isn't quite this dark. This I guy agree. looks sinister. The, yeah. the people I mean? kind of look like, ooh, cute little gins that we're capturing. Yeah, it you looks know, like, they I have mean, that. like Aladdin's genie yeah. looking guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? That looks terrifying. I love that. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I would like that. Yeah, so I am worried that the, the artwork a little bit on the board here is a little more spooky than the game gives you. It doesn't mm -hmm. really give me back that spooky feel, but um, I do like the theme in it. I thought I do, it did. A lot. Not, you know, again, it's not a... I think it helps a lot that it is not generic, oh, we're wizards thing. The gin right. twist on it <clears throat> saves what I would have found to be thoroughly pedestrian. Right, and I think it takes it from being a dry Euro to a Euro. You're yeah. like, oh, this is a Euro game, but I would not say it's dry. That's a good way to put that, I think, yeah. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. Um, any other thoughts? I do like how you, you touched on it a bit, how you do get more... 
powerful in certain areas as the game progresses. Mm -hmm. yes. That center area, you can get that for more inexpensive because beginning of the game, it's just you don't want to spend that much. But then later, it's like, okay, I'm going to try to make my way in there and cash in. Yeah. And that whole map that you're going through could be shorter depending on who's in front of you. Yes. That is beneficial. Like, I'm going to go through you and kind of get that, get there quicker. Yeah. Well, the like linked that. gears in this game are interesting. They are. Yeah. You know, yeah. you move up so that you can store more power Moving up means you can go to the center, that fountain of, of mm -hmm. power in the center, and do things for fewer scrolls. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. as or you put out your secondary actions on the little square spaces, you put them all out, you level up your bottom power, and you now can go over here to this tower, the archives, and take better actions. I like those, that the, the, everything in the game or, you know, enough things so that it gives you that illusion, feel connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. Feel like, ooh, I press this button and something happens over there. Yeah. yeah. And I like that feeling. I yeah. do too. And I like how everything's modular. You can change the board around. Right. Yeah. Then the, the game changes. Yeah. That's something really I was going to touch on is I really like the modularity of that, that mm -hmm. all the different locations punch out and you can, you know, shake them up and put, place them out randomly. Uh, you know, once you kind of conquer or really enjoy the base game if you want a little extra challenge you can go into those uh the tiles that you draft to give you the yeah. powers the positive and the negative power so it has some um, space to kind of grow as well yeah, there's extra game scoring game. opportunities you can choose to do uh, you start with a boon and a, and a negative mm -hmm. ability that you can choose to draft you know but it's optional this is not something they even rec they recommend you not use that stuff when you're learning and you can leave that in the box forever. You never have to play that way. But it's extra stuff, right? Because the game, again, it has this... It's an interesting feel that when you're first taught or you first learn, you go, oof, that's, that's a lot. And even through that one play, by the end, you're like, oh, that's it. 30 points for this, 30 points. He's in the bottle, yes. so 10, 3... Scoring is also very simple. It's that's, refreshingly simple. It's so nice. <laughs> that's one thing I want to mention. For a Euro, it's crazy. You look down, done. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your scoring is clean in yeah. this game, right? It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, all right, so final thoughts. You Who wants me? to start? I, Go for go it, Joey. Okay. <laughs> I'll start. You know what? Um, again, the theme is what brings me into this, and it does a lot of things that I think Euros need to do. It's got the cascading, it's got everything, and the scoring is quick. The only thing is the learning curve at the beginning, and I see myself playing this with people that that I've played with before because that, that first explaining things, I don't know why it seems so difficult because the game, once you're into it, it's like, okay, I get this. I'm committed to seven. I really enjoy this. I think it's one that... I think it flows, and I think what brings us forward for me is the theme. The theme of grabbing those genies, putting them in the bottles, that right there is just rewarding. Mm -hmm. I yeah. find that really enjoyable. I don't think the cover, I'm with you, I don't think the cover matches the feeling of the game. Mm -hmm. I yeah. agree, yeah, yeah, the to tonally it feels a little off. But. Right, yeah, right, sure. so, but I, I do love it. Yeah, so nice. seven for me. Uh, I'm a little bit higher, I'm at a 7.5, and I'm, for, for very, very different reasons, though. I feel like this is one that I'm very engaged in the gameplay. I love the mechanisms of it. I think it's really fun to figure out how you're going to go around the town and you, you know you face one direction into the location you're going, which means you next turn you have two different ways. So you're mapping out ahead. You're mapping ahead where you're going to go in your next two or three turns in order to get that that perfect combination. You know the the gin and the cork and the bottle together. Right. Um, and and so I, I really find that very engaging gameplay. But I do feel like it becomes repetitive about halfway through the game. Sure. The game starts to overstay its welcome a little too early for me. Um, so where I find it's every gameplay to gameplay is very different based on how those locations are randomly put out on the board. If you do the drafting of the powers, um, if you go into the one, I forget which one it is, but where you're taking and you're putting out your little extra actions. And how are you yeah, going to combo archives, yeah. the yeah, archives? Yeah, how are you yeah. going to combo your yes. extra actions? I love that. It's so much fun. Game to game. But in game, it becomes repetitive. I agree. So there's modularity, which brings variability to the gameplay. But once you start playing about halfway through, you're like, all right, same turn. Okay, I need to do this six more times in a row, and then we'll trigger end game. I want to hop on top of that argument 
because I'm giving it the same thing as you, mm -hmm. 7.5, and add that while I like the movement in the game, I find it to be an interesting mechanical idea, you often find yourself going, well, sure, I'll move over there and flip over a, a treasure chest mm -hmm. and be like, right. hey, a scroll and two coins. Yeah. You're up. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yes. That happens a good amount. Yeah. That doesn't mean that there is not uh, agency in the game. It just means that because of the way it works out, you will have many turns which you don't have the ability to say, and now I'll buy a bottle, and now I'll buy a cork. Mm -hmm. No, you'll, you'll get to that. You, you know have... what I mean? You just go to one of the two next places, right. and you do what you can do there. You yeah. have a lot of those turns that are stepping tur stepping stones to your next turn. Yeah. Right. I'm going to stop here and, all right, I'll turn this treasure chest over because really I need that chalice right. over there to then go to the right color gin. Right. It you reminds know, like me that. of an argument I made a long time ago about Agricola. Um, and so, again, if you love Agricola, then ignore my thoughts on this. But in Agricola, that, that feeling of you and I are doing the same stuff throughout the game we just do it in different orders because of the way worker placement mm. works. Oh, you right. took the spot where I could have gotten a horse. I will eventually go to that spot and get yeah. a horse. So you end up with a few horses, a few cows, a few sheep, a few plots, and I end up with a few horses, a few cows, and we did them. We did kind of the same stuff yeah. in a different order. This game has that feeling. Like, oh, you got two bottles. Great turn. I, I will do that eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? I so yeah. the sequencing, well, I know the gins are different. They dry up and, you know, new ones pop up and what have you. But it does have that feeling of this is all an illusion of choice. That you're kind of all doing the same stuff yeah. in different orders. Right. Um, yeah. But that is a fun exercise. It is, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and the theme helps and quick turns help. The whole thing is scored quickly. Has a good feel. Yeah. Um, I would say this is not as good as Hadara from, for me. Not even close, actually. Hadara is a great game. But I do like this one better than a Crown of Amara. I think it is less dry than that game. Mm -hmm. So, okay. if you are, you know, if you've played those from the same designer and you're aware of those, then hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. So there we go, folks. That's going to do it for us. That is a seal of approval for Jin right here. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching this one. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Joy Evans. And I'm Camilla. Invest in uh, gin bottles. They, they're going up yeah. in price. They are. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this review or whatever you just watched, wasn't it amazing? Uh, check out our channel, Dice Tower. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We review games. We do top tens. We play games live. It's all about board games, but especially the people who play them. Check out Dice Tower YouTube channel.